Hey everybody, it's The Flash from Man Sewing, and today my good friend Rob is gonna show you how to make an awesome cape. Gotta fly, find myself a phone booth and change, and get Rob to help you out. Hey everybody, so sorry about that. I understand my buddy The Flash just came flying through here to steal my thunder and get you all jazzed up about today's tutorial. A superhero cape for your children or you, as long as they don't catch you wearing it, right? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a print and we're gonna use some solids to make some really fun uh, superhero costuming, let's say. So I've got a DC Comic license print that was put out by Camelot Fabrics. I love some of the licensed goods that they do. And then I just chose a green and a yellow and a red solid uh, to match, and then we're gonna use those to make the applique. Now, to make the applique, I literally typed into my Google search, I think it was superhero logos, and it came up and there's an entire alphabet available, and we're gonna drop that link in the, in the comment section below for you so that you can go ahead and follow that, but there's every letter in the alphabet set up <laughs> like this. I wanna show you first how to make the background for the cape, and then we're gonna come back to the applique, all right? So for my size cape, and I'm not the biggest guy you're ever gonna meet, I'm barely six foot tall, right? So I'm using a yard and a quarter of fabric. Um, for a child, maybe a yard, if you have somebody maybe six and a half foot tall or something like that, a yard and a half, I'm not sure, but you basically just need a yard and a quarter of the print and a yard and a quarter of the main solid for your liner, this green, and then I use like fat quarters for the other solids that I'm gonna to use to make my logo. A little bit of fusible web, and that's about all we need for this project, right? So the first thing is, is this particular comic happens to have a direction to its print. So I wanna make sure that this is the bottom and this is the top of my print. So I've already pre-cut these to try to make these pieces of fabric just as close to the exact same size as possible. And they are folded on the selvage, okay? And then what I need to do first is I'm going to show you how to prepare these pieces and we're going to do a little bit of marking and we're going to actually end up cutting most of the selvage off anyways. So I'm going to try to take this nice and slow for us. I'm going to need my little Sharpie that I've already got out and I'm going to need my ruler. So the first cut, I'm actually going to mark on the selvage side and I'm coming up five inches from the bottom. I'm also telling you right now, I'm cutting both fabrics at the exact same time. So even if they're not exact, they're exactly the same, if that makes sense. So I'm coming up five inches from the bottom, making myself a nice mark, okay? And then at the top corner, I'm going to have an 18 inch piece that came across my shoulder blades there. So I need to mark nine inches from my center point. Let me get that a little easier for all of us to see at home. And then I'm just gonna come over nine inches to my center point. So that's gonna give me nine and nine is 18. Okay. Now from here, I wanna draw this line and then I'm gonna cut the line. So I'm gonna kinda make this thing go how I can on my work table. Pretty darn easy. And then I'm gonna use a ruler coming this way and then I'm gonna grab my big square from back here and use that as the other half of my ruler. And I've just about got what I need. Of course, you could, if you were, had your old uh, carpenter's chalk, you could snap a chalk line, right? And this just needs to be close. Whatever we make, because we're cutting both at the same time, we're going to be fantastic for the cape. Okay? Then I'm just gonna extend that line out a little bit. So that's done. And I'm going to now get the rulers kind of out of my way and just free cut that with the rotary cutter. It'll make life a little bit easier and probably easier for us to follow along. Okay, so here we go. We will end up sewing this with the right sides of our fabrics together. So if there's a little bit of this marker line showing still, it's not gonna be a problem. Don't get too excited when we're done. We have one more cut, so don't go whipping your fabric off the table and saying, aha, I've got it, right? We have one more little slice to do here. See, 
a lot easier than it looked. Just like that, okay? I'm just setting those out of the way for a moment. We're gonna use those to make our ties. But the last cut we need to make, I like my cape to kind of arc back to the center. So this is now my low point. The corner becomes my high point. And I'm gonna make this just a nice gradual curve. I like to get my fingers behind my cutter when I'm doing that. That looks about right. Oh, when I say that and something fell off, oh, you know what, it's my little bump on the table. Let's just cut that a little bit again, no big deal. Oh, why is that shifting on me? I should be cutting from the corner. <laughs> so funny, you know, I'm so always thinking about getting a good angle so that we can see what we're doing from home, right? But let me just take a moment and make this a little bit easier on me. There we go. See, just like that. <laughs> Sorry about that, but as you all know, I like to do this uh, in as few of takes as possible. So sometimes you have to sit through a little bit of that. Awesome, right? Okay, so this is the front and the back of our cape already dialed in. Now I'm just gonna fold this slightly out of the way for a moment. And then let's talk about the ties real quick. From our fall off here, I'm gonna use the green fabric and I probably only need one side of it here. And I'm going to make a two inch by 30 inch strip. Okay, let's do it this way and this way and this way and this way. And I'm first going to trim off my edge. That's the selvage there. Okay, so that's a goner. And now, yes, I didn't close my blade. I'm gonna cut myself a two inch strip. Okay, and another two inch strip, like that. And these become the ties. And I'm just gonna stitch these with the right sides together and then turn them right sides back out so I've got some nice tubes. And I've got some fun tutorials and I should say quick tips out there for you for making the tubes. So we've got some elongated information if you need. You know my string trick, you've seen my ruler trick I hope. So there's a lot of way to turn these tubes. But for today, because I want to spend some time on the applique and the satin stitching and things, I'm going to have to tell you that I basically finished the tubes already for you. But what I've also done is I've stitched the end closed. So I've got one closed end and one open end there, that open end's gonna get stitched into the seam allowance of the cape and the cape's liner, so we're not worried about closing both ends, okay? And I'll show you how to put those in in just a second. Now, when it comes to doing satin stitching and or uh, raw edge applique, when you're using fusible web, please be aware, if it's a paper-backed fusible web, like the one I use, the Heat and Bond Feather Light, you must transpose your image, right? So you can't use it if it's a letter the way you would recognize it. You must use it from the backside or the backwards version like this, okay? Because the paperback fusible transposes the image a second time. So when you're using letters, always use a reversed image, please. Okay, and then all you simply do is you take your diagram and you would lay your fusible web on the top and then you take out that little Sharpie marker and one of my tricks I've done, and you can see here, I've already got, have this already traced out for us, okay? But one of the things I like to do when I'm marking this kind of stuff is I'll come in here and I'll just do little L shapes that kind of show the corners and the gaps. And then when I'm done, I come back in and I address those lines like that with my ruler. So if I need to fill in a space, then I just come in here and I'll ruler between those two little spaces if I need. I'm gonna cut this out so if it's not perfectly traced, that's okay. But I'm just gonna go around and use those little L's in my ruler so that it makes it a little bit easier than trying to draw all of that detail work and having it shifting around on us. So hopefully that trick makes a little bit of sense for you as well. And what I have done already is I've already cut out these yellow pieces, and when I was designing it, I wanted the green from the background of the liner, or the background of the cape itself to show through, right? So I only made the red pieces, and then I've also made 
all of my little yellow pieces here. So now that I have the red pieces traced and fused onto the what would be the back side of the solid fabric, which is it's solid, so it's either side really. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. But in cutting it out, I am also going to use my rotary cutter and my ruler because at this part I want it to be as crisp and as beautiful as possible. So now I'm just going to cut my logo out. Once the logo is cut out, then I will iron the red and the yellow to the green before I begin completing the construction of the cape. I do not want the satin stitching that I will use like this to hold down the anchoring of the logo to show through on the front side of the cape. Okay, here's a fun little trick for getting on the insides of some of these lines. Sometimes I will start it if I wanted to scissor cut it, but for the most part, even without the ruler, I can get in here and go pretty straight, pretty straight. Okay, so you can do it with or without the ruler. I prefer the ruler. It also keeps your hands a little safer as well. It takes a little bit more time, but we're not in a hurry because we love our craft. So the more time we can spend with our craft, the better, right? Try not to cut all the way through your logo to the other side, but if you did, the glue would hold it back in place, no problem. Okay, one more little cut to make here, one there. Tell you what, I'll finish cutting this and be back in a flash. Told you that wouldn't take long. Okay, so I now have my logo all cut out and the little highlight pieces. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that my cape piece is completely organized and flat on my board. So I'm just going to take a moment, move that out of our way and our ties we're going to need here in a second. So this goes on the green and it goes facing upright. Okay, so we're going to have that there. We're going to get this on here like that. And now if I remember correctly, I came down about a hand or half a hand's width. I was kind of thinking that this top part here would be running along my shoulder blades and I wanted the other part to come down. So I kind of figured, you know, it's about a hand's width. I guess you could measure. The nicest thing of anything is this fabric could come right off the bolt. So I had this really nice crisp edge that I'm going to line this out on. And the point of the logo is what I'm talking about. Uh-oh. There it is. We must peel the paper off the back. That exposes our glue. And now we're ready to put this in place. And with the Heat and Bond Featherlight, it doesn't love to be ironed over and over again. So I want to iron this just one time. So I'm going to put the red and I'm going to put the yellow pieces in place before I press it. Okay, now I have that just the way I want it. And I'm going to come in here you want a nice dry iron. I'm hoping mine is gonna not steam because I forgot to turn off the steam. <laughs> so we're just gonna press this for about two to three seconds. And I made it. Get that on out of the way. I'm gonna let that cool. And now I've got my sewing machine set up for the satin stitching. And a satin stitch is just a narrow little zigzag. So right now I've got it set up to be a three and a half millimeter wide zigzag, but only a 0 0.3 stitch length. So it's gonna be a nice tight little zigzag stitch to form that. And then the other thing that's kind of cool, somewhere around here, we're just gonna use the back of this, I think. I will also use a piece of paper on the back to act like a stabilizer. When you're satin stitching, it's nice to have a stabilizer that will help you not draw the fabric up a ton. So I'm just laying that in there. I'm gonna lift my presser foot up. Now with the satin stitching on this particular machine, it zigzags off the center needle position. And so I'm going to watch on the center of my foot, there's a line and that line in the middle of my foot is going to be the line now that divides the fabric for the applique and the fabric of the green for the background cape. So I'm going to start stitching this now.
And with the satin stitching, to get a really pretty satin stitch, you really don't want to be pushing your fabric too fast through the machine. I really prefer to steer anyways instead of push or pull. And then the only real thing I can tell you about is on some of these corners, you're just going to want to take the time to make sure you pivot nicely on your corners. But just take your time, turn up the music, and enjoy satin stitching around your logo. And I'll be back in a flash. All right, once you've got all your satin st stitching done, and just a reminder, the reason I want you to satin stitch is it makes this very, very washable. We do need to get all that paper off of the back. So just grab a hold, that's why we're using some relatively inexpensive printer paper. And if you need, I've got a little pair of tweezers in my hand here too. Sometimes you can poke at this stuff with tweezers. I'm not gonna worry too much about cleaning up the threads, because this is gonna all be hidden on the inside. And even if all that paper doesn't come out, it will wash away a little bit later on. Call that good enough, right? So now I basically have this laying right side up here. I'm taking my ties and I'm taking my ties and I'm making sure they stay to the interior. I'm gonna drop them down about, oh, say half of an inch. And I'm putting a straight pin in. And I'm actually gonna let that tab stick out just enough that I can see it when I'm stitching around, right? And then the other thing I've learned to do is I'm gonna come down here in the field and I'm just gonna stick another pin. And then this one, I'm gonna do the same. So about the same, about a half inch down. A little bit of that tail sticking out so I'll be able to see it when I come around the corner. Bring that bad boy down, let's just pin them both together. And that's only being pinned there just to keep them from slipping around or getting caught in one of our side seam allowances. I'm sure that makes sense to any of you that have had that happen in the past. Now you're gonna take your print and you're going to drop your print, print sides together with the right side of your green solid fabric. Okay, and I'm gonna leave an opening at the bottom which will make my life much easier for my sewing. So I'm just going to line up my corner here and I'm going to grab it, bring it over to my machine, set it back to my straight stitch, drop the presser foot, and let's do a little bit of a back stitch as we start. And that's going to make it easier to pull all that fabric through. And now I'm just going to go ahead and stitch all the way around and leave about a six inch opening right before where I started over here so I can turn this right sides back out. So just as a reminder, as I'm coming in up here close, I've got that other strap up here. So just make sure that everything's nice and organized. I've kind of got everything finger pinched together. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep finishing this out, heading back for that starting spot where we're gonna leave that six inch opening. Now I'm just stopping to check real quick and see where my starting spot is. So it's way over here. So I've got a ways to go before I'm ready to stop. If you had a problem with your uh, cut along that arc at the bottom, this would be a good time to kind of soften it up. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody have a problem with a curved cut before. Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut my threads. A back stitch is important there as well. And now we're just going to reach up inside. Now remember, you've got those pins you put in there, so be very careful. I'm actually kind of sliding my hand along the print side because I know the pins are in the green fabric, right? And we're just going to roll this back out. And now that that applique has been stitched into place you can iron around it or on it all day long it's not coming off ever 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 so here we go there's our ties let's take this pin out now so i don't get stuck with it again there and this one and this one right so I give it a little shake through, okay? And then if you're gonna to be top stitching something this large, it's often a good idea to kind of come in here and roll your edges, right? And then kind of press on it so that everything stays nice and crisp like that. And as a matter of fact, just to make life easy on us here, let me bring this one to you and show you what we've got, okay? So this is what I mean by our top stitching right right along there that's how i sealed that edge up right 
So that works good. We've got our logo. So that's all we still have to do on this last cape is finish it with the top stitching. And you are ready to wear this and go for your very first flight. Now the most important tip of the entire tutorial I have for you is like this. And now I am a parent, you know this. I've got a son and a daughter. And so when I was constructing the cape, I had a concern. Normally, if you tie your cape around your neck like this, there's a choking hazard, which I'm concerned about. So people talk about breakaway Velcro, but it actually will start to pull on your neck and become uncomfortable. So what I learned with those extra long straps is you bring this around like this and you can tie it behind your back or you might have to help your children tie it behind their back. This is incredibly comfortable. It provides no choking hazard. Let me see if I've got it like that. And better than that, look, it makes super muscles. I love it. And I love all of you. Thanks for watching today at Man Sewing. <laughs>